It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beautiful souls. You are live with Expresso for one more hour. We got you in our clutches and we're going to have a little bit of fun right now. Getting to know one of our guests, a very special young man, a little bit better this morning. We're back with our favorite social media duo, Joshio, uh, Joshio Rubin and Caroline Indlovo, of course. Caroline stepped out for a second so we can shift gears and take a look at some of Josh's amazing work as a documentary photographer. Josh, um, busy man, dude. Busy, I, busy man. I have been, yes. <laughs> we, we, we've seen the side to you, this fun and playful side with you and Caroline, but now taking it into your work of photography and videography skills, tell us a bit more about that. So I've been taking photos since I was 10 years old. My, ga my dad gave me a camera and since then that's all I've ever wanted to do. I never did well in school or anything else <laughs> in my life really besides photography. Um, yeah, I, I, I left school, studied photography and I've kind of moved more into the documentary space. And um, I, I mean, I do a lot of different things, but documentary is definitely my favorite thing. And I've, I've moved on to doing these kind of short interviews and letting people tell their stories through my platform. I, and, and some powerful stories as that. We, we speak of Joshua Ruiz, a nine-year-old with a soup kitchen. Um, Brian and Rennell, mother and son, who were shot in a gang crossfire. Yeah. These are some pretty intense kind of moments of human narrative to delve mm. into. How does that affect you as a documentarian? Does it inspire you? Does it remove your faith in humanity? How do you process when you're dealing with this kind of content? So in, in terms of the Rennell and Brian story, that... I mean, I, I saw that through social media and um, I just, it was such a powerful story and I've been working a lot in the Cape Flats recently and um, this is something they see, you see in the Cape Flats quite a lot and um, that, I mean, that didn't happen in the Cape Flats but it's the same kind of story and um, it's hard to tell these stories and I've never had any sort of training in this kind of work. I, I generally just wander into these areas and um, see how it goes and... Um, it's what I love to do. It's definitely hard work to do. But um, just giving someone a platform like the one I've built over the last few years to tell their story and um, hopefully better their lives through my platform, that's, I mean, that makes it worth it. Where do you hope to see this go? What message do you maybe want to send out to people with you telling the story and showing other people's stories? So... I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit lost at the moment. I'm feeling a little bit all over the place. Last year was a crazy year for me. I was out. You're not alone, bro. I yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I'm the only one. Yeah, yeah. So last year was, was crazy. I mean, I was out throughout the whole of lockdown documenting it. And um, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. And um, I went through a lot along with everyone else. And I've started this year feeling a bit lost, not knowing exactly where to go. And uh, it, it was really nice to like, be invited here. Um, I, but, but I'm not too sure where to go, to be honest. I would love to keep doing my documentary work, but I think I need to make a change in some sort of way. I need to kind of take some time and do stuff that I love doing in other ways as mm. well. Because doing this work just alone and not doing anything else can get very intense and, and, um, yeah. Yeah, and I want to get say someone down. It's okay. It's sometimes okay to feel lost in your journey because you're not at the destination. You are exactly that part of the journey. So yeah. sometimes you have to be lost to find out, you know, who you are and what where the what the next is. step yeah. is. No, completely, man. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. I, I have no doubt that maybe this has kick-started a new process that will hopefully <laughs> reveal the next step. So, yeah. But um, we'll give you a few more weeks of lockdown to just think about it. Thank you. So yeah, don't yeah. worry. We, we, we were all on that same, same note. I think so much of, of what was superfluous in the world has just been torn away now and on, all of us have been forced to kind of hold up a mirror and see where we are. Yeah. Um, uh, you're a fantastic young man doing amazing Thank things, you. sending an amazing <laughs> message out into the world. So, so we are so happy to have been just a little part of that journey. Thank and you it's very so much. so cool to see where you are now after having mm. first connected with you years ago. It's and crazy I, I actually used to that, take man. photos behind the scenes on Espresso, so it's really cool to be on. I've been here before, but it's really cool <laughs> to be on the side of the camera again, uh, especially uh, with Caroline. Um, yeah, and the two of you are just uh, magical, lovely, even if you do get on each other's nerves. So, yeah. so good to, to have you back again. All the best for the new year. Thank you very much. And you too.